Yeah. Thanks for being here, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, open up the floor for questions over here to the right. Austin Ward, uh, Rivals, the podcast. I think what you saw in, in the game was similar to what you've seen in practice. Uh, some good things, some things that you know you'd like to see a little bit better. But uh, but he's growing. Uh, I think that uh, the picture sometimes w was clean, other times not as clean. I think when um, you know Marvin only played a couple drives there, and, and then he was out, and certainly not having a Mecca and Julian and those guys. But um, but but as you, you know, you saw there was some 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 sparks. I thought the throw to Carnell was an excellent one. But um, you know other stuff that he wants to look you know look to improve on. So we'll get on the film and figure out what that was. And sometimes it's hard out there because there's so much going on. Uh, and it's going fast because you're calling it back and forth. So, um, you know, overall, 15 practices, and there was improvement there. We're going to go with Stephen Means, Cleveland.com to the left, and then come back over to Dylan Davis, Delaware Gazette. Ryan, kind of on both sides, when you're missing your top four wide receivers, your running backs are not really participating that much in the spring. Whether it's the defense, the way they perform today or throughout the spring, or with Kyle and Devin, how you're evaluating them, how do you, like, me measure – kind of bank that into how you're evaluating both sides of the ball when you don't necessarily get full strength. Yeah, you, you try to look at it through the, the whole 15 practices of, of what you've seen. Uh, if you're starting to see the secondary get a few, their hands on, on some balls and all of a sudden it doesn't happen for a few days, you know, it's probably not real. We, we've seen that for almost 15 practices, what you saw today. So that was really good. I think the, the challenge will be increased in the preseason when, like you said, you know, we're at full strength there. But um, you can just see the discernment. It, it, it's everything's faster, you know. Um, they're they're moving faster. They're seeing it, and I, and I think being year two in the system, uh, adding Davis in there, you, you're starting to see um, the secondary move faster, make more plays, be more, be more uh, decisive. Over here, uh, Dylan Davis, Delaware Gazette, and over to the left. Then it'll go to uh, Rob Aller, Columbus Dispatch. Can you just walk us through the play calling dynamic? Uh, how heavily involved was Brian with that today, and how involved were you? And I guess where do you sit with that heading out of the spring into the summer? Uh, yeah, so. today we didn't really do much uh, signaling. We just kind of huddled, and I kind of relayed the call in, and it was back and forth on the headset. And um, so th there's been um, some growth there as well um, through 15 practices. We've had different times where we were able to uh, get into some move it situations where both sides were able to call it off the call sheet, not just script it. So that was great, and that's what happened today as well. So we'll, we'll look at it and evaluate it and, and uh, you know, keep working at it and see, see how it goes in the fall, long way to the fall. But um, it's good for – it's healthy for everybody to go through this, and it's everybody on, um, on the offensive side of the ball as well, you know, coming up with a game plan, coming up with uh, plays, and then installing them, then putting them on the field. It's more than just play calling. Um, and I think that's where, you know, you, as you continue to grow and uh, guys are in new positions, uh, you, you learn. And there's only one way to do it, and that's to, to actually get out there and physically go through it. Uh, over to the left, Steve Hellwagen, 24-7 Sports. Yeah, we've you know, talked to him about what, um, we see his role being, and, and it's at running back this year. You, you saw him put on some weight and be able to carry it. And, you know, you can see he's got some high-end speed, some top-end speed. He comes out the back end, and, um, you know, he had that long run. But I still think he was the second leading um, ball carrier on the day. I think the first one was Archie Griffin. And uh, that was fun watching him there. You know, he – I think next year is the 50th anniversary of his first Heisman. So we wanted to make sure he came back for that one. And so – the offense needed a little help at that point, too, right around the 30-yard line. So we felt like we called into the bullpen and pulled in 45. So that was good. Um, but no, Chip uh, has done a nice job. He's, he's changed his, his body a little bit, gotten stronger. Uh, he's a load in there. You can see him hit it. So uh, he has big playability. There were things that he did uh, in the games that he played in last year that we liked. And so we're going to keep building on that. Or to the right, Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Ryan, the offensive line has been a big issue all spring. What did you see today? How concerned are you overall? Um, inconsistent. Uh, I, th I thought that there was some good t things, but um, but we need more consistency there. You know, the good news is on defense, we're getting in the backfield and creating <laughs> confusion and chaos. Um, so it's, it's one of those things where you, know, you, you always want. I got it, Harry. 
Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. No matter where you turn, it's right and there. everywhere. <laughs> See Austin. Um, what was the question? Yeah, yeah, about the offense. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. Uh, good, good to get to see the defense make some plays, and, and that was good. But but we need more consistency there. Yeah. Uh, over to the left, Cam Teague Robinson, the Athletic. Ryan, kind of off the offensive line question. You guys mix and match a lot all spring, just yeah. to figure out what works, what doesn't. When you talk about consistency, how do you evaluate consistency when you guys you might have a different tackle guard combination in at different times? Yeah, I don't know if that matters as much. I know what you're saying. I think that's more during the season when you start to get into calls and things like that. We were very vanilla on defense today. We didn't blitz one time. So there really isn't a lot of communication that this is one on one, me against you technique. That's what really the spring is, we think. And then we start getting to schematics more. We did it a little bit at the end of spring, but more in the preseason. So this is about being able to consistently do it. When you flash, when we say, you know, he flashed, what does that mean? That means he's done it once or twice. You've seen him do it. It's like coming home with an A in algebra. Then you expect to come home with an A in algebra all the time. You can't come home with a C then, you know, in the second marking quarter or marking period. So uh, that's what we're looking for. And that, that's what separates good from great players is being able to do it all the time. Um, so, you know, we need to see more of that. Uh, we're going to go over here to the right. Tim May with on three. And at the same time, I'm going to I'm going to bring Denzel Burke and Cody Simon and set them up in the back for anyone that wants to talk to them there. Go ahead, Tim. And then we'll go back over to the left. Rob Aller. Uh, Ryan, leaving the field after that uh, game against Georgia, you know, you were kind of, I don't know, disappointed in the defense, I guess is the best way of putting it, right? Uh, do you leave here today with like a renewed optimism? I mean, how would you explain? Well, you I think when you, when you leave the spring, you know, you get a feel for where things are. And when you start the spring, it's hard. And I think you hear, you know, me say or us say that, you know, we'll get through the spring and we'll have a better feeling. So coming out of the spring, I do. I, I think the first thing was the back end explosives. Um, you saw today we didn't really give up a lot of explosives, maybe just a couple down in, the, in the second half. Uh, and that's, that's important for us, you know, is we, we expect to score a lot of points on offense. And if we can avoid explosive plays, then that's a, that's a recipe for – for winning, which we, you know, that was the idea in 2019, and, and you know, we need to continue to do do that. So, as we come out of the spring, we'll evaluate it. We'll go through each pos position, but um, there, there's there's reason for optimism for sure. Hey, real quickie, uh, uh, well, when you evaluate Cal today, do you keep in mind that boy, there were, there was very little time sometimes to get things done. I mean, how, how do you how do you balance all of that? Oh yeah, you take all those things into consideration. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it was – I know Devin was excited or excited about playing in this game, so not being able to was disappointing for him. Um, but I thought, you know, Tristan and Kyle both, you know, were out there competing. And uh, it wasn't always a clean pocket. wasn't always a clean look on the back end. Um, but, but I did like the throw he had for the touchdown. Those were, you know, being able to make, make those throws were big down the field. You know, when, when you have an opportunity to make those downfield throws, that's been the difference for us that, you know, when we were explosive, we're at our best football. And um, so that was a good step in the right direction. What's that? Yeah, a little bit here and there. Yeah, yeah, but not as much as today. Uh, over to the left, Rob Waller, Columbus Dispatch. Yeah, Ryan, every team is unique. Every team has its own identity. I think last year leadership was a, was a big part. Is it too early to say what the identity of this team is? Maybe not on the field, but behind the scenes? And No, no, it's something that we wanted to forge uh, early in the, uh, the off season, and it was about competing. Um, you know, we've talked a long and hard about how there's difference between hard work and competing. Everybody's working hard. If without it, you don't have a chance. But competing means winning or losing. And so we had a lot of win or loser. I think you guys were at a couple of the practices. You heard that all the time. Win or loser, win or loser, compete. Um, you know, we have another message that we want to get in the summer. We'll get into that down the road. But it's been about competing. And that when you go against your, your clone, when you go against your equal and talents equated, uh, what are you going to win? What's your edge? And so uh, that's been a huge message for us and a focus and emphasis. How is the leadership? I know you developed it last year with some stuff you did. Is it carried over or do you have to kind of start from scratch on that? Well, we, we did the same thing we did the year before. So we, we went through the leadership, uh, voted on that leadership committee, um, drafted squads, and I thought it was excellent. Uh, we're going to do that again. So we start again right after the spring. Um, you know, we'll draft or we'll um, pick some new leaders because some guys that you think are leaders in February maybe don't. Uh, do a great job, or some emerge, and so that changes. And then we'll go through and have another draft, go through the summer workouts with, with Mick, and then we'll have a really good idea of who the captains will be when we get in, into August. So um, this is our second year doing the leadership committee and having these squads, and I think it's really built strong leadership in the team, and, and uh, I feel good about where our leadership is at right now. 
We got two more questions for Coach over here, Nathan Baird, Cleveland.com. To go back to Kyle, I guess you could talk about Devin in the same uh, capacity, but a couple times today he had those, like from one far hash to the sideline throws, like things that look like they're they're tougher throws. Where do you feel like both of them are right now, just as far as the underlying skill that maybe still has to be refined? Are you are you happy with where that's trending? Um, yeah, I mean, I think Kyle and Devin both have strong arms. They they can make that field throw. Um, you know, when you're playing against drop eight and you're playing against you know zone coverage like that, you know they're gonna they're gonna drop pretty hard. And um, you know, we relied a little bit on drop back pass. Once you get to drop back pass, you're seeing those guys drop into the zones, and then you have to really negotiate the zones. Um, I thought when we did call a couple of the play actions and, and the RPO at the end there where you know guys are down to the line of scrimmage and, and create more of that run pass conflict, uh, it opened up some more windows. But but I think Kyle can do do all of those. We, he's seen um, we've seen them do that, where he can make the, all those throws. He can handle play action. He can handle RPO. He can handle drop back pass. Uh, he can make the field throws. So he definitely has the skill set. Over to the left, Stephen Kishbaugh, the Lantern. Uh, Coach, on Wednesday you mentioned that the defensive line was an area that you were a little bit concerned about. Um, how did you think they looked today, and what do you think they still need to improve upon? Uh, I don't know if I'm concerned about the D-line. I, I think one thing that we need to make sure we're doing is building depth. Yeah. Um, you know, I feel like, you know, we have the right people in place, um, you know, in terms of starters and the first group or so. Um, now, those guys have to play great, you know, and that's important. You know, as you, as you take the next step in your progression, it's one thing to be a starter. It's another thing to be a difference maker. I think we have quite a few guys that can be difference makers. Uh, I think, you know, you're referring to the depth. And we like to play a lot of depth here. It's a long season. So that's an area that, you know, we got to continue to see improvement. But um, guys like Kenata Jackson stepped up. And we need more and more of those guys to do that in the D-line. And final question for Coach over here to the right, Tony Gerdman, Buckeye Huddle. Ryan, C.J. Hicks today, is that, uh, is that flashing or is that consistency? Just what have you seen from him today, this spring? And if, if that's who he is, how do you find time for him this season? I'm going to put a new category in there. He flashed more today. So, um, you know, we're still looking for that consistency. But you, you, you're starting to see it more and more. Uh, he's making plays. He's showing up. And I think, you know, Jim and James are both doing a great job uh, with him. If I can, I'll put it out. Is he a gamer more than a practicer at this point, or is it just youth? Yeah, I, I mean, I know what you're saying. I, I don't know really as much as we practice if being a gamer, you know, really exists. I mean, certainly – some guys, you know, can handle playing games better than others, but if you don't practice well, it's hard to play well. Um, and what we what we saw in practice is what we saw in the uh, game today. Great, coach. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Folks, let's go ahead and wrap up with Denzel, and we'll see.
I mean, the the starting receivers today, Marvin Harrison, Carnell Tate, and Jaden Ballard, I mean, those are 